There was no readme, I think. No, there was? Yeah. I wasn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even touch it. No, it's fine. Uh, You're right. Okay. My we fault. Are, we are ready, so uh, I'll be okay. just be around here. So, so I, I, I'll explain you what I would like to, to do with this uh, open space, which I think might be interesting. Um, if you are able to all clone, uh, well, first of all, you need all Emacs installed, and possibly Emacs 24, at least. 23, uh, I don't know, because the problem is the package installer, which is, we, I mean, if you're able to install all these packages by yourself, or you already have them, then, then it's not a problem, but, um, yeah. So then, uh, this is uh, the URL, uh, the thing you have to clone, and then uh, the only other thing you need to do is uh, install two Python packages. You can install them on your user, or do sudo pip, uh, blah, blah, blah. So, I, um, yeah, so let me know if you have problems with that, and then I can start. So what I will do is to show uh, how we can make a very simple, like, 100 line, 107 lines configuration, which does more or less everything you, you need to, to do. Well, not everything, but most of the things that people ask for when they want to write Python code, such as uh, snippets, auto-completion, um, show you the list of things which I would like to show. Uh, snippets, uh, JD for the auto-completion, pilot uh, warnings and errors in the buffer, uh, how to compile things, and to run things, run tests, for example, Magit for Git integration, how the customization works a bit, the package installer, um, and then also the last one is find file repository, which is quite nice, allows you to uh, automatically use the Git, Git LS files, and find files in a repository with a simple keystroke, as I will show now. So if everyone, so well, first of all, I just, uh, how, I, I don't really know what is the level of Emacs knowledge. I can't, I can't start from scratch, uh, sadly, but I will just try to explain a few basic things which might be useful, like uh, just some uh, basic terminology at least. Um, well, here I'm using uh, Awesome, which is a window manager, so uh, it's, um, so these are two actually separate um, windows. But in, a, in a Emacs, the terminology is a bit different because a window is here, is like an Emacs entity. So these two are two different windows, even if are in the same, in the same um, window manager window somehow. Then we have a buffer, which is the, the thing where you, you write text. And the buffer can be associated with a file or not. So it's not necessary. If I do like the scratch buffer, which where, where things are open no, more normally, you don't see any, um, it's not associated with any file. And it starts normally with, with asterisk. Um, then what do you have? Then you have uh, a frame. A frame is the window in, uh, um, in the standard window manager sense. You can have multiple frames for the same instance of Emacs. I can make another one now. I can kill, uh, can kill it now. Ah, yes, and then the other thing, do you all get, did you all get this URL? No, maybe? Another thing which I will do now, which might be interesting, there is this nice, um, this nice extension which will show all the keys I will, I'm pressing. So then if I go here, for example, it will show switch frame, I go here, control A, and then it will tell you also which function has been executed. So then you can see I'm not cheating or I'm doing anything strange. Show keys dot L, show keys or something like this. No, it's, I had to download it from uh, GitHub. Yeah, that's the only thing. But because this, I didn't include it in the configuration because I only I need this, I think, so. Um, right, so I start from the beginning. Yes. Well, except for this thing, but uh, yeah. So let me see. Well, I can show you first. I'm not sure if I should show you first. Uh, okay, I show. I go in order. I uncomment everything. Start again, Emacs. So you see that I do one thing at a time. 
and we don't get confused. Right, so I quit Emacs. It's something you should never do. So I go again, project talks, EP, blah, blah, Emacs. And then I open the init file. No, not this. Here, minimal uh, init. Uh, I will remove a few things so they get more space available. I remove menu bar mode, I remove toolbar mode. Then what else? A scroll bar mode. Scroll bar mode. Ah, that is more clean. Then I make a new frame, so I have two, two frames. Then uh, I load the file show keys and I enable it here. And then so far, uh, I'm still running with the default configuration. I did a max minus Q, which doesn't load any init file. Right, so let me uncomment everything, just to make sure. First of all, I, I use the package installer, which is something nice that was added in, in, a, in, a, in Max24. Um, if I press Ctrl X, Ctrl E, it will evaluate uh, each line. So first of all, I require it. Then I initialize, oops, sorry. I initialize, what am I doing? Yeah, I initialize it. And then I add a couple of repositories for extra, extra packages, because I want to see uh, things that are not in the standard one, but then I, and then I do package refresh contents, which will, uh, if internet works, will contact the various host here. Yeah, it works. And then here, uh, there is a function which I evaluate, and then I have a list of extensions which I would like you to, to, to use because I think they're useful. So there is Python mode, which is a, a different mode than the default one. Um, which is, I think, more powerful and more nicer. Then it's Magit, which is for Magit uh, integration. Yes, Snippet for snippets like in TextMate. JD for auto-completion and so on. Auto-complete, useful with, with JD to get the actual auto-completion. Auto-pair to close brackets. Um, and then find file repository, which uh, i show you later what it does. So now I have all these things. I have this function, install if needed. We'll install the package only if it's not there. So it will check, it checks unless the package is already installed, install it, simply. And then I use a map C, pass the name of the function and the list. It's like a map in, uh, in Python, basically. So I do this, what variable to install, because I didn't evaluate this. I do this, blah, blah. I didn't do anything because I already installed them, because I didn't trust the network, so I installed it before. But if you do that, you, you will download everything and com byte compile and put them in a place which is basically um, .d elpa and then here are all the packages. If you have any questions or you have troubles installing and doing things, tell me, please. Do, yep. do you use elget? No, I use, a, well, it's similar, but I mean, this is like the, the standard way now to do it. So there have been many different ways but then they finally found. And the only thing, well, the good thing uh, is that you just add these two packages. Actually, to, to see all the packages you have available, you can do list packages, and then you will uh, contact the various hosts, and then uh, we'll show you the whole list, and then you can install which one you want very easily. I click here, I say install, and it's installed. So nice and simple. All right, uh, first thing I will uh, add, I think, is Magit. So, I uncomment this, then I evaluate, evaluate, evaluate. And now um, I install Magit, and then I also set a global set key. Uh, control XG will call this function Magit status. So I do Control XG, and then he asks me if I want to save a file, yes. And now I am in the Magit, uh, mm, this is like the Magit entry, entry point. Here you can do all the cool things. So I can uh, click uh, with, um, uh, tab and then see the diff of the file. I can go with P and N and go to the various different parts of the diff. Then I can see if I press uh, um, if I press L, it goes. It shows me a long list of things. We, this is the log, git, Magit log, and then I press L again. I set the list of all the commits, for example. Then I go with N, and I see for each commit like the diff. Uh, I can do. I can do Magit, uh, and I don't even remember all the things, but if I do Magit checkout, and it tells me we switch to, and then I switch to a branch, 
It's a, uh, you can do basically anything. You can rebase, you can, uh, you can do everything from this simple interface. And there is also a branch manager, which is quite nice, which allows you to create, remote, uh, check out different branches, uh, remote, uh, uh, remove remote branches, and so on. Okay. Better now? Yeah? Okay. So then uh, I will require a few more, now I do eval region instead, uh, a few more uh, extensions, which I already installed, and then we, um, and this, and this also find file in the repository, which maybe I, I'm not sure I required actually. So yeah, uh, find file repository, I bind it to F7, uh, because that's how I do it, but you, you can bind it to anything, and you can, so the nice thing is that I press F7 now, and then it will tell me find file repository, and it will uh, actually call like uh, git ls files, and then give me a list of all the things, and, like in the actual repository where I'm in. So I jump to this one, then I go back. Um, okay, here there are some settings for autocomplete. Uh, if you're not, if you're, if you're not com very familiar with the Lisp, uh, set queue is simply uh, like a setting a global variable. Um, Elisp uh, is uh, basically a dynamic uh, scope, uh, uh, sadly, well, it's like a glo they're all global variables, but all the names, all the things, unless you do uh, a let, uh, unless you do other things, but by default, uh, it's like this. Then we go to the interesting part, which is um, the, Python, uh, the Python settings. Uh, first of all, I have already Python mod installed, but it doesn't know, now if I open a Python file, um, Wait. So if I do x.py, it will use it the default Python Python thing. Um, I can see it because I know that that is Python in the, this mod line. So if I do this instead, it will uh, for each uh, file which is called uh, ends with .py, it will use this new Python mod which I installed. This auto mod list is simply um, an uh, association between uh, extension between a regular expression and the mod that should open it. You can see that it's uh, basically this long thing with all the possible modes and extensions and so on. Then I just set a few more variables. And then this is the more interesting part is that when uh, um, every mode normally has uh, a, a variable with a uh, dash hook in the end, uh, and this variable is a list of it's a list of things which will get executed when the mode is uh, enabled. So, for example, now if I evaluate this, and then I evaluate this, this hook will get had added to the to the um, to the Python mode hook, and then if I create a new uh, create a new file, new py, and now as you can see below, I have yes, which is yes snippet, and pair both enabled. Uh, it's just, uh, wait, I just know which one it is because uh, if, if you hit control, I, I can do major mode, for example, yeah. and it shows me Python mode. Otherwise, it should be just Python, yes. I think if, you hit control, okay. if I do, yeah, if I, no, actually, I think I'm still using the old one. Ah, no, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I'm still using the old one because I didn't do require Python mode. Sorry. Pyth I forgot to do that now. If I do it again, I do revert buffer. It should become pi. Yeah, it became pi. I, I Python mode is pi in, in this mode line. And, and, but if you do like, if you do this, you see control HF and then the name of the function, you see where, the, where this function is defined from. It's like say Python mode.el. Right, so I have to go quickly, actually. So then, um, the next interesting part is JD, which is this library which you uh, need to install this JD package, and um, um, and this is what actually, now I have to set up something else, because I'm, I have to force Python 2, sadly. Machine. Andrea. So, for unbalanced parsers, okay. 
So now I set Jedi, and now uh, the other thing which I need to do is to actually uh, set the hook, uh, also add the hook also for Jedi. So when I, when I enable Python mode, it will uh, enable here Jedi setup, and then it will do AC setup, which is for auto completion, and then it will, uh, I just set some uh, other key bindings for me because I like them, basically. Right, so now I enable this hook. Now I go again uh, um, to complete, maybe, to complete the pi. And if everything went fine, I should have autocomplete, yes. As you can see, I already see this import. And then if I wait for some time, it shows me where it comes from, and it shows me the doc string. So now I do import OS, then if I do OS, and then I do S, uh, it will show me a list of things. And I do this, I select this, I do control D, it shows me the doc string of this thing. If I call it, it should also yeah, suggest me what is the uh, input that I have to pass to this thing. Right. If I'm using Python modules, like I, I should have a file called library, yes. So I do from, from library import function, I add, and then I can do I can go to this, and I can uh, alt uh, dot, and it will jump, will jump to the right thing. This is still thanks to, to JD. So this is actually what um, JD does. It does auto completion. It jumps to the definition. It shows you the document and so on. What? I think JD is much better. Well, I think the problem is uh, Pimax has always been a bit clunky. I don't know. I never, I never, and this is much faster, I think. It's very, uh, I think it's very, very good. It's a very good library. Yep. Then the other thing is uh, FlyMake, which allows you to have inline errors of, um, from PyLint in the buffer. Uh, so this, this is a bit tricky to explain everything, but um, yeah, so this basically just uh, says, this I also copied somewhere. I mean, it's somewhere on the internet. I don't even remember what it does, but. So uh, it has to set like a temporary file where it does all the, all the parsing and all the, the yeah, it runs PyLint on this temporary file and then it, it gives back this, uh, the results of the, the error checking to the original file and it shows in the buffer. Then I have something smarter here, which is FlyMake Activate which simply activate FlyMake, but then in plus also check uh, if, the, if it's the real file, if there is a buffer file name, so it means that the file is not just, uh, the, the, the buffer is not just not attached to any file, so there is a file name. And then it also checks that the file is actually writable, because otherwise uh, I, I can't create this temporary file. Uh, and then a couple of bindings which are useful. So well, I evaluate this, I evaluate this, this is again something nice to get some more uh, interactive help. And then I say post command hook. Uh, then I say that I want to enable this fly make Python in it for the files that end with pi. I value this. And then to the Python mode hook, I add fly make activate and autocomplete mode also. So I go back to this file now. I do revert buffer which also reloads the hooks when I, because it reloads the void function fly make Python in it because I forgot to, sorry. Again, yeah. Now I work now, I see I have fly make here and it tells me I have uh, zero errors and actually no, I have one warning and it tells me unused import function. Right. So now I do function and it disappears. If I have like a syntax error, here it is. Undefined variable, KDX. If I have another error here, then I press Control N, it will jump me to the previous error, Control N, previous error, Control P. Actually, I should have said, well, I, I can make it jump to the, to the errors. I can, um, and I fix them, and they just disappear. So this, this in the background runs epilint. Uh, in my real configuration, I make it run also pep and something else, and then combine all these results and uh, show me something even nicer. But it's already good enough. Right, then uh, last, well, a few less, how many? Uh, not much. Um, 
Then I also enable Edo mode, which is very nice, as you can see. At the moment, from the moment I enable Edo mode, I already have this nicer way to switch between buffers. And same thing uh, when I press Control X, Control F to jump between files. Uh, this is also this is something from the standard library, uh, from the standard image installation as well as. Then a few other things which are just um, this is to jump between windows without doing Control X O but just doing shift, as you see, I do shift right, shift left, which is the same as control X O, control X. But this works also going up and down, not just, uh, otherwise with control X O, you have to do the whole circle around. Um, okay, then uh, I show you how you create, how you can create a snippet, because I haven't shown that, I think. So suppose you don't want to always define things, right, type everything, which I don't want normally. I have a yes enabled here, yeah, and then I want to say that uh, um, I do I do this combination, control X and control N, or yes, new snippet, and then I say uh, fun, um, this, I move a few things, and then I say function, uh, arguments, and then I go here. So this uh, is basically somehow the same syntax that was in TextMate, and I think also other programs have a similar thing. Uh, this means when I do it uh, with with a with a curly bracket, with a curly bracket, then I I can pass. It will jump to this thing, and the order of when it jumps to things. Well, I show you what I will show you how it works because I can't explain. So I do Control C, Control C now. Uh, ask me for which mode I want to save it. I say Python mode, save to a new file. Yes, and then save it to the file func. It was saved in my .emx directory. Now I, I type func, uh, wait, fun, and here it is. So here it gives me args, but I can override it, and then it jumps to the to the zero. Uh, another th another cool thing that it can do, um, for example, is is uh, with mirroring. I can define something with mirroring. Uh, arg, and then I can reuse the same value again, uh, print, simply like this, just saying again. Now I save this, mirroring, press mirror, and now if I change this, also the other one changes. And then it goes again to the, to the last place. So I think that's more or less all I wanted to show. Uh, read me. Let me see if I got, forgot anything. How to complete, fly, make, uh, maggy, customize. Yeah, well, uh, and yeah, another thing which is nice is that you can customize all these packages uh, easily now, actually, in, uh, in um, Emacs, because you can say customize group, and then I say, for example, maggy. And here I get an interface where I see all the options that I can set, what is the default value, um, doc string for that, it tells you what to do, and you can change it, and you can save it also somewhere. So that's, so yeah, it's not true, it's not so true anymore that Emacs is difficult, I think. <laughs> Just takes a few years and then you're fine. <laughs> uh, okay, well I think, I think I leave time for questions or try to help someone if you, someone managed to, to I, I would like someone to actually manage to, to to configure it and be, a, I thought, I think it runs for everyone because I tried with the new user, not, not anything installed, but yeah. yeah. Questions, problems? Yes, uh, I can show you again. Hear me? And then, uh, wait, I will also tweet that here probably. Uh, any questions on uh, Lisp or Emacs or uh, anything? Yeah. If I want one, sorry. Uh, what we use on Spartan for simplicity, Python uh, definition, class, uh, function, Python EM. I 
I don't I have two projects and I have very uh, fast and uh, we don't uh, function. To simplify defining new classes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you can use a snippet for that. Yeah, yeah. snippet. The, the thing I was showing before, like to to do this, no? Uh, wait. Ah. Because now I have conflicting things, okay. This thing, no? You can just create a snippet with a class definition and some methods, and then uh, in uh, like a, a template, and then uh, we, with this kind of syntax, one, uh, and you can do, actually, you can do anything you want. You can even have a Lisp inside this snippet. So you can actually evaluate some code there and do crazy things if you really want to. Okay. Yeah, but unfortunately, we have finished time, uh, okay. so if you, uh, you, you can go also um, outside or... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, but time is finished, really. Uh, we need to switch, uh, switch rooms, sorry. Yeah, you can find uh, me uh, here around outside. You can though. find <laughs> Andre outside. <laughs> uh, will you be here for the sprint? I'm not sure. No, I'm talking about the game. Okay. Thank you. Eh, insomma, tempo era breve, però.